Hello Rams, welcome back to the last edition of Bleacher Beat before fall break. I know, it's already that time crazy. Anyways, I'm your host, as always, Brandon Cruz. Well, volleyball and football might have fallen into some hot water last week, but basketball sure did stay afloat. See what CSU Athletics has in store this time around. All that and more on Bleacher Beat, which starts right now. As I said at the top, we've got all things CSU on tonight's episode. And let's get this green and gold talk started on a positive note with undefeated men's and women's hoops. Now, I know the competition for both of these teams has been lacking as of late. I mean, it's the beginning of the season. What do you expect? Nevertheless, the games still count, and with upsets always lurking in the shadows of college basketball, I think it's wise to take a close look at each contest, no matter who the opponent is. We'll start on the women's side, where the Rams actually tipped off their week of action yesterday, battling Oral Roberts in Moby Arena. The men took care of business against the Golden Eagles a week ago. Could Coach Williams and company do the same? The answer was a resounding yes. In what was a relatively close game for the first 30 minutes, CSU pulled away in the fourth quarter, outscoring ORU 19-11 and route to a 71-56 victory. Carly Murphy led the Rams in scoring with 18 points, while McKenna Hofschild distributed the ball effectively for six assists. Points in the paint and precise free throw shooting was the story in the Rams' victory. After the win, the 3-0 Rams must now pivot for their first road test of the year, heading down I-25 to the state capitol to take on DU Thursday evening at 7. They'll then return home on Sunday for Lipscomb at noon to wrap up their week. You know, what I've noticed from CSU women's basketball, especially in the last two games, is that they kind of stay with their opponent the first three quarters, and then in the fourth quarter, they really pull it out. Now, that's not much of a concern because you'd rather that happen than vice versa, because momentum is really more impactful at the end, I believe. But with more competition coming up, especially in December, January, and February, the Rams will need to pull up a full 40 minutes in order to have a chance against those teams. And Louisville, who's ranked number 10 in the nation, is actually coming to town the Sunday of Thanksgiving break. So the competition is still on the horizon, and I'm assuming Coach Williams will make it a goal for his team to have a full 40 minutes when those games come up. And like the women, the men have also posted a perfect start to the 2021-2022 season, averaging 96 points in their three wins. Again, I understand who they've played hasn't been great, but that's still an impressive showing on offense. And with the way CSU football kicked off the fall, I'm sure Ram fans felt a tiny sigh of relief to see a CSU program actually meet their lofty early season expectations for once. Now, while beating up on lower competition is, well, pretty fun, Colorado State's schedule definitely starts to get a little bit tougher like the women's squad. Starting this weekend, when CSU travels to the beautiful U.S. Virgin Islands in St. Thomas for the Paradise Jam Tournament. The Rams will duel the Bradley Braves in the first round, followed by either Brown University or Creighton, depending on who wins what. The 18 tourney goes through Monday, with the championship game being played that evening at 6. If the Rams were to exit the Caribbean as Paradise Jam champions, that would mean a 6-0 start to the season and potentially a ranking from the AP poll next to their name. Quick note, but you may have noticed a CU Buffalo sitting in the bracket. That's because in-state arch rival Colorado is also part of the tourney. So assuming both win out, that would mean that would be quite the title game as a CSU fan. But regardless of what happens, I'm just real excited to see how the Rams approach their first real test of the season. Okay. Moving past basketball, let's stay on the court for some volleyball. We enter the final week of the regular season with the Rams holding a slim one-game advantage over both Utah State and surging San Jose State. And what do you know, CSU faces one of those teams on Thursday, driving up to Logan, Utah to battle the Aggies at 7. That will be a huge match with Mountain West regular season title hopes on the line. 
The Rams will then remain in the Northern Rockies for the weekend, ending with Boise State on Saturday to conclude their regular season. It's definitely coming down to the wire, so fingers crossed the Rams can finish it off. And finally, I'm not going to waste too much of your time with football because they're just an embarrassment to begin with. After an abysmal outing against run-heavy Air Force, the Rams packed their bags for an overseas trip to Hawaii on Saturday to take on the Rainbow Warriors late in the evening at 9. No longer bowl eligible, as if anybody really cared, the Rams just looked to pad some W's to that already egregious record. It's been a roller coaster of a season for CSU football. They started low, then rose a little bit in the first couple of weeks of October, and now they've tanked again, losing four straight. Sorry, Rams, but it's time to undo the belt and look for another ride because it's pretty much over. Well, Ram fans, that's all the sports action I have for you tonight. Be sure to catch Cam's Corner on Thursday for more sporting news. But don't go away just yet. Noah Pasley ends tonight's show by giving you all an inside look at CSU's logging sports team.